Today we are here with brother Jaden and we're just going to um, get him to share his testimony about what they're going to burn, what made him come to the faith. So um, brother Jaden, what encouraged you to come to the faith and just believe in Jesus? So I would say, you know, it was, it was kind of not really a decision, I was kind of led to it um, growing up. I, I didn't grow up in, in a good environment, healthy environment, you know, with family-wise or even social environment. I grew up in bad places, you know, Paramount, uh, Compton area like that, Pasadena, East LA. So all the all these people around me, situations, I never really had that kind of that faith in my life, truly. Like, you know, there's always you know, neighbors or, or, you know, like family friends that, that say, hey, Jesus is Lord, like, things like that. But, you know, you have all these things around you, these influences and stuff, and you kind of get washed out. But I know, like, I always spent my time playing football. That was my way to, to get away from all, like, the nonsense. So I had the opportunity to play college football. And I had, I think it was about six or seven universities I could have chose. And a lot of people tell me, you know, I'll go to this school, go to this school. And, like, for some reason, I felt something telling me to go to this random school, like, in the middle of, like, nowhere, basically. It, it's, like, a super small city, super small college. But I still decided to go there. And, you know, my first day there, I, I met a youth pastor. Kind of, I was kind of drawn to him. I didn't know he was a youth pastor, but I saw the guy and I was like, felt moved to go up and talk to him. So I did, and it turns out he's a youth pastor and had a program for you know college athletes. And he kind of said, hey, uh, here's a free Bible. You know, I'd love to talk with you. We sat down one on one. He kind of showed me, you know, a couple verses and he showed me what's true about Jesus. And I kind of felt like. My heart was needing that, that there's this hole in my heart that I was trying to fill with, with worldly desires and like football and all this stuff. And it, at that moment, it clicked. It was like, nah, this is it. This is what I've been missing, you know, my whole life. So at that moment, you know, I gave my life to Christ. And ever since then, I've been reading the Bible every single day and, and trying to really just grow my connection, you know, build fellowship like I have with you and, and uh, Jay right here. And I, I just think that that's really what kind of drove me, just that... I don't know that urge, but right. kind of just like everything fell in place. Right. But I would say that that's really what got me to where I'm at right now. Awesome. And, and something that you said that stood out to me was that um, when you were talking about how you know so many people were trying to you to go into one direction, and we know the Bible tells us that narrow is the path. So sometimes, you know, I know a lot of people have even asked on YouTube, you know, how do you know that you're hearing from God? You know, of course, being in the Word, but also sometimes God will tell us things that goes against the grain. That it won't go against His Word, but it'll it'll go against what people want us to do. So I'm, I'm glad that you were following God, that He gave you that discernment in that moment, because you know that's what that's called. You know, you were being led by His Spirit. So um, that's it for today. Maybe we'll have um, this was just a mini interview. Um, I felt led to just allow um, Brother Jaden to get up here to share his testimony, and you too can get you know divine. Um, guidance from God. He will He will lead you and guide you. You know, God knew Brother Jaden's desire. He knew that the worldly things weren't fulfilling him. He knew that he he wanted to he wanted Jesus. He needed Jesus. So God placed the right people in his life, the right opportunity and that's how he's able to be here with us today. Every time compass he is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow Yes, he is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Satan defeated, hallelujah, Satan defeated, hallelujah, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, he is Lord, he is Lord. Lord. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
I was talking to my great grandma earlier this week, and it's truly a blessing to have someone um, up in age that's in their 90s um, to just talk to. And she was talking about how some people believe that there was just a big bang. Well, I'm here to remind you by the Spirit of God that there was a big bang and it was caused, caused by God. We all see and know that these buildings just didn't get here because they appeared. Someone had to build them. They had someone that designed them. They had an architect. And God is the architect of this earth. So you might be an atheist. You may believe that there was a big bang. There was a big bang, and the bang was caused by God. If I stopped my feet, it was the, um, <laughs> somebody might feel it. Well, I was the one that caused it. So everything has a, um, a cause. Everything has a beginning as far as what we, as far as what exists within our time, because we know that God exists outside of time. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, in the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So, <laughs> God doesn't want us to be confused about how the earth got here. Truly, it was because of his, his um, wisdom and his infinite knowledge. The Bible says that we shouldn't lead to our own understanding. We should lead to God and trust in him. Truly, we can't even trust in our own human intellect to, to um, tell us how we got here. A lot of people have relied on that. A lot of scientists have relied on that. But the thing about it is we need to trust in God because he created us. Why would we, why would we trust in ourselves when we did not create ourselves? The Bible says that he formed us and not we ourselves. So I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. He has a perfect plan for your life. And you don't have to be confused about that plan. The Bible says that if you draw near to God, he will draw nigh to you. So we're going to read one more scripture and then we'll go from there. Jesus loves you. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the, that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And we can't get into heaven on our own accord. We can't do good things. A lot of people like to say, well, I'm a good person. I give to the homeless. I do this, I do that. <laughs> but it's all about you. And, and it's not all about us. It's about Jesus. And he paid, He was the, the atonement for our sins. And he doesn't want us to trust in ourselves because even though you can say you're a good person, the Bible says that nobody is good but God. I'm not a good person, but only Jesus Christ is a good one. So we have to trust in him. We have to trust in his righteousness. He is the way, the truth, and the life. A lot of ways, there are a lot of ways that lead to destruction, but only one way that leads to eternal life. And the question is, is where do you want to spend eternal life? Because one day, none of this is going to matter. All of us have to stand before God. The Bible says that it is appointed unto men to die once. There's no reincarnation. It's appointed unto us to die once and then the judgment. We're going to have to stand before God, whether we believe in him or not whether we were too busy for him, whether we thought we were too smart. But the thing about it is God is love. I know I know a lot of people use that and it seems like a cliche thing, but God really is love because he sent his only begotten son into the world to restore our relationship back to him. Sin separated us from God and he had to show us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ how much he hates sin. He doesn't hate us, but he hates sin. And the Bible says that we are all unrighteous. Not all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I'm not preaching at you. I'm standing with you. I too need the mercy of God. I'm, I'm, I too am a sinner who needs Jesus Christ covering my sins. So I just want to remind you that Jesus loves you. And um, that's it. 
Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sun-dry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So Jesus Christ made the world. He was here before um, the world was formed. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When we had by himself, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. No, no other person purged our sins. And we had to have, God had to show us how much he hates sin. He doesn't hate us as people, but he hates sin. And he had to show us how much he hates sin, sin by sending Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. But it didn't stop there. He rose again in thir three days. And through his resurrection, it signified that we can have life through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came that we may have life. Not to condemn the world, but when we, we understand that God does have a, a standard because God is a holy God. He understood that we needed help. We can't make it on our own. We couldn't die for our own sin. We're not, the Bible says that nobody is good but God. So being a good person won't get you into heaven. Having faith in Jesus Christ will get you into heaven. you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. So, you know, we can't just stay in the church. We have to go out and spread the gospel because the sick need to hear the gospel. Some people have never heard of the gospel, but the Bible says that the gospel is going to be preached throughout the earth and then the end will come. So everybody's going to have a chance to, to listen, to hear the gospel, to obey the gospel. But God loves us so much that he gives us free will. You know, you don't want to be in a relationship with anybody where you have to force them to love you. So God isn't going to force us to choose him. He's very um, patient towards us. He's great. He's very merciful. The Bible says that his, his mercy endures forever. But he is a just God. And one day, each and every one of us are going to have to give an account for our life. The Bible says that man is going to have to give an account for every idle word that they spoke. So today is the day of salvation. Some people may say, well, you know, I'll wait to get saved after I get married or after I find my dream career or whatever. Or after, or after I master my favorite skateboard trick. <laughs> but don't wait because the Bible says that today is the day of salvation.